Hello, this is ECHO 2017, question 35. So, in this question, we're told that the graph of y equals fx intersects the x-axis at exactly two distinct points. And we're told to consider uh, these following graphs. And they ask how many of these necessarily inter intersect the x-axis at exactly two distinct points. Okay, so... These are a list of uh, functions that we're considering, and our graph is going to look somewhere like this uh, around the points where it intersects the x-axis. So it might, you know, it doesn't really matter what it does after that, but we know it doesn't cross the x-axis again, again because it only crosses in two places. Okay, so for this first one, f of x plus 2, well, that's just this curve but moved up two places. Uh, so if we move this up, depending on how the scaling is on the y-axis, we can see we could easily move this up two places so that it was all above the x-axis and then it wouldn't cross anywhere. So this uh, first one doesn't necessarily have to cross the x-axis. Now for f of x plus 2, uh, this is moving the graph left two places and we can see that it doesn't matter how far we move this left, uh, the there's still going to be two places here and here that cross the x-axis. We're just shifting the points at where it crosses to the left as well. So this one uh, would have two distinct points that cross the x-axis. Now for this third one, this is a stretch in the y direction uh, by a factor of 2. But at these two places where f of x crosses the x-axis, so f of x is 0, uh, on the original graph, so when we stretch it, uh, f of x is 0, so 2 f of x is still going to be 0. So where it crosses uh, in the original graph after we stretch, they're still going to cross. So this one would cross the x-axis in two places. Okay, now for this uh, fourth one, so this is a reflection in the x-axis, and then we shift up by 2. So this depends on what uh, the rest of the graph looks like, but if we had something like so, like this, so we have a couple of maximum points and uh, it doesn't ever cross the x-axis again. But then if we reflect this and now we move it up, we could move it up to places so that these, uh, what used to be maximums and now minimums, lie above the x-axis and now it doesn't cross anywhere. So this one doesn't necessarily have to cross. And finally, for this last one, it's a reflection in the x-direction and then a stretch in the x-direction, so it becomes thinner, uh, so it looks something like this. And you can see that when we reflect it, uh, we still have the two points um, where it crosses the x-axis, because we haven't moved up or down. And then when we stretch, these points just moved in. So we are still going to get uh, two places where it crosses the x-axis, so that's another tick. So all in all, we've got three of these graphs where uh, they have to have two distinct intersections. So we have solution D.